Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. So today we're going to talk a little bit about Jessica Jones season three. Um, for a little while there, of course, there's a bit of there's some doubt as to whether or not we would actually be getting a season three. But um, thankfully, uh, we have it is finally here, uh, and this may very well be um, at this point. I think it's safe to say that we won't be getting a Punisher season three. So Jessica Jones is in fact the last of the Disney Netflix series that we'll be getting. Um, at least, at the very least, before um, uh, the properties move over to Disney streaming, whether it's Disney Plus or Hulu, whatever the case might be. Um, but this is the last time, the last series that we'll be getting from Netflix. So, season three, since this is, this is a character-driven series, I'm, I'm just going to touch on some of the characters um, um, that I've, ha I've highlighted throughout this, um, this season. Uh, some of them new, some old. Um, and, and we'll touch on some points and give and I'll give my impressions at the at the very end. So this is in no particular order. Um, so the first person on, on my list is going to be Dorothy Walker, and uh, I was as surprised as anyone else that um, Dorothy actually made it on my list. Um, but and I, I challenge you to think about this, um, Dorothy from the very first season, season one, two, and all season three. Um, you know, this is the, despite what happened to her this season. If you've already watched the series, you know that um, um, she she gets she gets killed by the serial um, by the serial killer um, Salinger. Um, but season one, season two, season three, Dorothy has been one of the most consistent characters throughout the Jessica Jones series, um, bar none. And she's at the end of this season, she's the MVP of this um, this season for me. Right, um, we we were we, we were taught to hate her, you know, from the very first season because of how she came across. Not so much as Trisha's mom as it, as it is her agent, right? But um, there there was this episode, episode eleven, which interestingly enough is, uh, you know, the episode eleven I believe was um, Kristen Ritter's first directorial debut. She she directed that episode, and it, it's my least favorite episode in the season. All right, and we talk a, a whole lot with Daredevil and Luke Cage and Jessica Jones about the, the series running a bit too long and that 10 episodes is really the sweet spot, but, you know, they, they continually go above that to 13. Um, but that said, um, my issue was with the episode wasn't necessarily the directing so much as um, the, the character piece. It, 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 it was uh, giving us a lot of information about Dorothy and um, and Trish and, and, and her, Trish's um, childhood growing up as a child star, but uh, I, I felt as though that was unnecessary, all right? Um, we got uh, um, bits here and there throughout season one, season two, enough to formulate um, an opinion in terms of um, what the, how what the Dorothy's character is and, and how Trish came to be the way she was. So the episode 11 in, in, in its entirety, um, felt as though it was one of those episodes that was added as um, as fluff um, to make up the 13, right? Um, so I still think Kristen Ritter did a fantastic job directing it, but at the same time, the the episode itself felt unnecessary and it didn't move the story in any way. Um, but I, I, I brought up the episode because, um, uh, because of Dorothy, right? Um, uh, while, it did, it, it, um, while it wasn't my favorite episode, it did highlight some aspects of her um, her character, which by the end of this season, I felt as though that's where Jessica got a lot of her, um, you know, a lot of her traits from. You know, um, the the season touches a bit on Trish and how um, how motivated she is and um, never giving up, right? And that's something that she did in fact get from Dorothy that was hammered into her as a kid. But at the same time, um, Dorothy's mannerisms and her directness. Is something that we've always seen in Jessica, and uh, um, in, it's clear that she didn't get it from her mom. If you're looking back at um, at season two, so for me, watching Dorothy's story and looking back at Jessica um, in the episodes that followed, um, I, I felt as though that's where she that's where she picked that up from, right? And I, as I said, the, the actress who plays Dorothy, she did a, a, a fantastic job. Um, and she's maintained, she's maintained a consistent performance and her character has been consistent 
from episode one to twenty, and I touched on consistency because it's something that I'm going to bring up a whole lot um, throughout this um, this discussion, um, and, and and that brings me to the next character who's um, Jaren Hogarth, right? And this is one of my as much as I enjoyed this season, um, one of my main you know my main criticisms for the season is there there are a lot of characters who who didn't necessarily grow throughout this season. I, I felt as though at the beginning and the end they were the exact same character and, and they were there um, just as, as, as fluff but not necessarily to, to move the, the story along. Right? And Jaren is one such character. Um, we, we, we spent some time with Jaren going through her, um, you know, her illness and her attempt to, I suppose, to, to, to make amends or um, you know, before she actually before she actually dies and she reaches out to her her old girlfriend who she cheated on in the past, um, but she considers her to be the love of her life. But then she decides the only way to to get her to return that affection is to destroy her husband, and and so by the end of it, it felt as though Jern's only Jern's journey um, only served the purpose of having a hostage by the end for Trish to take. To have Jessica come in, uh, her at, at at this stage, I mean, this is the final season, as, as far as you do know, right? So I, I can't say that okay, in the next season to follow, I can see what the um, what the end game is for Jerry and and how her character will get to that point. I can only look at season three because that's all I, as far as I know, that's all we'll be getting. And by the end of season three, I felt as though Jerry was still Jerry. She was self-indulgent, um, still selfish, looking out for n number one, and and that's the journey that we had from season one. It's the very same journey that we have in season three, and the, and, and so if we remove the, the Jaren's love story, the Jaren drama, and uh, episode eleven, I I do feel as though we would have been able to cut this down to at least ten episodes. Now the. If one of the directions I wish they had actually taken Jaren, and they touched on it a bit um, with her representing Salinger, um, because in some ways when Jaren was introduced, she was, um, you know, sort of the, the opposite of, of what um, Matt and, and Foggy represented, right? Um, she worked for corporations and, and sleazy criminals, right? And, and she represented them and got them off um, on, 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 you know, murder and, and, uh, and all any number of crimes that they've committed and uh, and with that they explored the, the you know the, the debate of um, humans versus not versus powered humans and they brought it up with Salinger after he trapped and um, he tricked Jessica you know and um, she beat the hell out of him but at the same time he got it on tape and uh, and filed a restraining order and he changed the narrative in the media that okay um, he's a he's a normal person, no um, no ability. He's just trying to live his life an ordinary as an ordinary um, citizen. And these these proud persons, the cheaters, as, as he calls them, these cheaters who never had to, who, who were just given these abilities and didn't have to work for it. Um, and they went with that when they mentioned that. I was you know I was I was overjoyed because I felt they were going to do something similar si similar to what they did with um, Daredevil um, and, and Kingpin, right? It was it was more than just a physical battle, but it was a battle of the minds, right? Um, we had Matt even, you know, seeing Kingpin uh, to, to some extent. And it was the same thing with Jessica and, and Kilgrey, right? Um, but with Kingpin and Matt's, uh, and Matt's scenario, they were constantly trying to not just uh, physically overcome the other, but at the same time, um, change the narrative to you know because uh, in terms of who the hero is and whether the public believes that Daredevil is the hero of um, of Hell's Kitchen or is it the Kingpin and so they were using the media as a weapon right and I was hoping that something similar would be done here but it was touched and it was touched when Salinger brought it up and then it was glossed over and um, it never really came back uh, this would have been a perfect op opportunity for them to actually make use of Hogarth in this way and, and put her on the opposite side of where, um, where Matt and Foggy um, are 
and representing this um, um, this uh, this person who doesn't have any abilities and what the public you know what the public feels right we, we got a lot of that in Daredevil in terms of how the public feels about this mass vigilante and and this kingpin right we had people pick a fence and stuff, and stuff like that telling fists to get out and then they quickly turn on Matt you know but um, I would have hoped to see something similar with um, with Salinger and Jaren. Um, but all we got was really um, Salinger making a statement and um, after that it, it pretty much just went away so we never really understood we never really got to see uh, how does the public feel about this about having these superpowered persons roaming around um, and uh, how that Im impacts their everyday life we, we didn't see it and it would have been a perfect opportunity you know, for them to use um, to use Jaren um, in, in that way so Jaren as a character I enjoyed her performance I get to love the actress um, uh, and and her portrayal of Jaren but I felt as though her character was stunted and it didn't her character did not grow from season one two to three the same journey that we had in season one is the very same journey that we had at the end of season three and um, who's to say whether or not we'll be getting a season four I would have absolutely loved to um, to see where um, where that where that um, that story led to, but um, now we don't know. Right? We know that she's still ill. Um, she will eventually die, but she didn't die here. So, what what was the the lesson that we? What was the takeaway from um, from her this entire season? Uh, it was still left. At, it was still an open question by the end of season three. Right. So moving on from Jane um, is Malcolm. Uh, Malcolm is very similar but different in that way and uh, I will say this I missed uh, watching this season I missed I missed Addict Malcolm right I missed Addict Malcolm and I missed Addict Malcolm because Addict Malcolm knew what the hell he wanted to do um, for the most of season three I'm um, following Malcolm um, and I was I, I was pretty glad to have him team up back um, team up with Jessica again but at the same time, it, it, the, the the constant inner monologue and the inner um, conflict within him, um, within himself about doing the right thing, doing what's right, and his solution to do, um, uh, to resolve that guilt that he felt about the the wrongs that he's been doing as a PI for Hogarth, you know, covering up for these um, for these criminals and and helping them get away, right? And his solution to um, the wrongs that he's been doing was to do something else that he should not have done some he's doing more wrongs to, f to fix the wrong that he already did so I, I was as confused as Malcolm was for the, for the most of this season right so he I mean he met someone um, at Jaren's office and when he finally made the revelation that okay and he said to Hogarth that um, whatever it is that you want me to be or, or his fiance and I forget her name I'm, I'm not sure if they were engaged, but they, they mentioned engagement, but they may not have been engaged. But he, he said, if that's what you both want me to be, that, then you know, that's not who I am. And at that moment, I thought we were going to see some level of growth, you know, and Malcolm finally coming into his own. But then he goes and hooks up with a hooker, um, not a few days after, not necessarily even breaking up with the girl, but because um, just, I don't know, just uh, having an argument, right? Um, so he hooks up with um, with Eric's sister. Um, for what reason? He I don't think Malcolm himself could explain why he didn't care that much about um, about the prostitute. To so so there was no rhyme or reason why he did it. Was it to feel better? I I don't know. So and then he tries to help her out, and it's like, okay, you're a good guy, Malcolm. Um, did you need to sleep with her to, to hear that? I, I doubt it very much. So, uh, Malcolm was very, um, Malcolm flip-flopped a lot this season. And by the end of the, se um, uh, the, the season, um, what I wanted for him, I, didn't, I, I don't want him to go back to being Jessica's, um, Jessica's assistant. Um, at the end there, she, she does give him the key um, for alias investigations. And... Uh, um, she leaves and says, take care of it. And by the time she got to the airport and the little cameo there with um, Kilgrave, um, or Kilgrave's voice, whisper, 
right? Um, she then turns back, um, presumably to head back home because she decides not to leave anymore, which means Malcolm is right back where she started. So I'm not quite sure what the takeaway is for Malcolm here. Um, I don't know if I'd call, you know, what he, I'd call it growth. Um, since he, he's, he's still conflicted, he's still not sure what the hell he's doing. Um, yeah, again, it was still good to see him working back with Jessica again to help people, which is what he said he wanted to do. Um, but I still, I was still, f I, I, I do hope if we do get a new season, um, I would want to see him start his own agency, right? I, I don't want to see him go back to meeting Jessica's assistant again because that would only cement um, the, my the criticism that he has not grown as a character. Um, I love the, the, I mean, his new look, you know, he, well, season two, absolutely love that end of season two, you know, he stepped up, decided to, to go on his own, and I would want him to stay on that trajectory and start his own agency, still collaborate with Jessica um, where, where, where it's necessary, but um, I wouldn't want him to go back to being Malcolm from season one, right? Now, um, Malcolm aside, there is, you know, Malcolm's successor, Jillian, uh, who I believe is the first transgender um, character in the, in this series, and I honestly, I, again, I enjoyed her a hell of a lot more than I did Malcolm this season. Um, she was just a, br a breath of fresh air. It's one of the. I mean, we got a, a few new characters this season, and she didn't. She just stood. She stood out in a way that it wasn't forceful. You know, um, she wasn't trying to stand out too much. She just, she just spoke her mind and and. She was there to do a job. She did the job. She didn't take any any bullshit from Jessica. Um, it was just nice having a normal person around who wasn't involved in, in, in all of the conflict that was going on and to see her reactions. And um, Julian was us in that scenario, right? Um, reacting to everything that was going on in real time. Um, so I thoroughly enjoyed Julian's character there. And um, I do hope if we do get another season that we do see her um, see her return. Now, uh, next on my list is um, is Eric. Eric, of course, is Jessica's new love interest, um, or at, at least more. Um, at the very start of the series, the season when he was introduced, I, I I felt as though he was just going to be another warm body for Jessica. You know, season one it was Luke Cage. Season two was her neighbor with the with the, the kid and ex wife, and um, and in season three it's Eric, right? But Eric turned out to be more and. Um, essentially um, reveals later on that he has ability he has an ability um, that allows him to you know sense basically sense evil in someone and um, sense their aura in, in, in a way right and um, it's not something that we have we have come across before it's a unique ability in you know even even among comic um, comic book characters you normally you'd think they'd want to go for it. They'd go for some something a, a, a bit more extravagant, an ability that's more flashy, right? But you know, if you thought you were thinking about budgetary constraint, this is not that that may have been the reason for going this this route. But um, uh, if you're going for budgetary constraint, then hey, this this works because he doesn't have to. It, it, there isn't any cue to signal his abilities. It's just the actor performing. And speaking of his performance, I. He reminded me a lot of Nathan Fillion. Um, he just had that charismatic vibe about him, even his facial features, in, you know, to some extent. Um, he just reminded me a whole lot of um, of Nathan Fillion, um, with the, the 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 charm that he had about him, right? So, so Nathan, um, of course, is involved in some gambling because he he you know he threatened some people to to bribe them and get money out of them. And it's one, uh, there is a question that the series did not answer that I've been wondering about. Um, because if someone comes to me and says, okay, I know you did some bad stuff, and maybe it's just me and I have too many skeletons in my closet, but I'd be like, which one, right? Um, I wouldn't immediately shove out thousands of dollars to keep you quiet if you, you d you're not even able to tell me what exactly I'm guilty of. And because his abilities doesn't tell him what they do, um, the severity of it just um, determines how bad it is, you know, how, how evil they, they, they are. And I suppose later on, I mean, uh, when they came across that guy that was burning down his buildings, um, he did have a file on him, 
so but as to whether or not he has a file on every single person that he comes across i doubt that very much especially when you consider someone like salinger who's um who's just super smart and 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 careful i doubt very much that he would have gotten anything on him because they had been trying to pin things on salinger and they couldn't right so i don't i just don't see him going to everyone and be like okay i have this on you and i will tell if you if you don't um if you don't pay like why why what what did i do right and and even so the um the bookie that the the lady and her sons that were kicking the shit out of him and throwing him in the pool with with blocks um tied to his legs um why couldn't he have done the same thing with her you know so to clear his debt Right? I'm sure she's done some pretty bad stuff. She all, she was going to kill him. Um, it's very likely that she has killed persons before. He could threaten her with that and, and, and get out of the clear. So um, I don't imagine she's that much more dangerous than Salinger or, or other persons that he has bribed. I mean, the officer that um, that I was killing the kids probably was more dangerous than she is. So um, so there were some question marks, but um, it, it worked for what they were trying to do, especially when um, we combine that with Salinger himself, um, who's next on my list, um, Gregory Salinger. You know, I, I don't know if this is a character from Jessica's um, comics, one of, from her rogues gallery. Um, and I will say this, that I'm impressed that the writers didn't go, they weren't tempted to go back to Kilgrave. It would have been very easy, right? Because he's, he's one of the more um, talked about and, and impressive characters that they, in this series. And the this universe as a whole this defenders universe as a whole right uh, it would have been very easy for them to just fall back to um to uh, to kilgrave similar to and, and not that they're not that it's a criticism against daredevil for bringing kingpin back um but we throughout season one and two we never really got kingpin it's just kingpin becoming kingpin right but i say that to say that um it would have been very easy for them to say okay look it worked for kingpin Let's do the same thing with um, with Kilgrave and have him come back in some way in season three. And yes, I know he was shot to the head, but there are several ways that he could have. He was a very smart guy, and he, um, uh, if they did, you know, if they went the route of him putting together some some elaborate plan, it's so sort of like Sherlock Holmes versus Moriarty. If you guys watch the Sherlock Holmes with this Benedict Cumberbatch. Um, long after uh, Moriarty died, he put, set some things in motion that would that would happen. It would seem as though he's alive, but these were just things that he put in place um, in in the event that he died. Um, so they very well could have done something like that and and had Kilgrave, you know, um, uh, have a number of individual individuals. Once he has passed, you know, um, he could have compelled them to to do certain things, to commit murders or whatever the case might be. Um, to just to mess with Jessica, just to mess with her for the hell of it. All right, so they could have gone that route, but they didn't. They chose to go with um, with um, Salinger, who's um, a, a serial killer. And uh, I, again, before initially I was tempted to think of him as a poor man's Kilgrave, but as the episodes went on, I was more and more impressed with the character, or at the very least, what they've done with the character. All right, introducing someone who is not powered, who's who's just human. I'm sure he's smart, and you know he um, he refers to Jessica and everyone else as as ants, you know, um, from his point of view. You know, so he's intelligent and he's a capable fighter, but he's still just human, and uh, that you know that tests her in ways that she would never have been tested fighting someone with with abilities, right? Um, it was a bit jarring at first, you know, when when the when she first came in contact with him after he stabbed her um her hesitation to actually hit him because i mean I, I imagine jessica has done worse we've seen her we've all seen her portfolio right and the mess that hogarth has has cleared her from um she has punched and beaten up guys and and broken things i'm sure numerous times irrespective of her getting caught um so i was a bit you know it was a bit jarring for her to just hesitate like she, um you know oh, oh no i'm gonna be caught I, I i shouldn't harm i shouldn't harm this guy um that it seemed out of character right um, but at the same time we do understand that following season two um she's trying to fulfill her mother's wishes in in terms of doing what a hero should actually do and heroes don't go around being people to a pop right 
So with that, it showed growth. I um, absolutely love that part of it. So this was Jessica um, learning to be Jessica Jones, um, the, the hero, not just the, the PI. Right. Um, uh, with that, though, um, I, I do have to say that after Salinger's, um, after they revealed, the, the, they found the bodies and um, and the, there were, the revelations were made in the media and he filed a restraining order against Jessica and, and told the media this was um, this was a poor person, you know, trying to uh, trying to oppress the persons that have no abilities. Th from that point onward, it felt as though it was less Salinger outsmarting everyone as it was everyone tripping on each other, tripping over each other and making Salinger look good, right? So, for example, the um, the, the the evidence, right? Um, that that was supposed to put Salinger away, and he made a deal with Jessica. Okay. Um, uh, Trish came in, came in, attacked him. He caught it on camera, and he said, "All right, uh, I will not show the um, show the authorities the information, and I won't press charges against her um, if you destroy the evidence that could put me that would put me away." Right? Um, once they lock him up here, they could pot potentially link him to the other murders based on, on on how the person died. This could have put him away, right? And she decided, "Okay, I'm going to go ahead and destroy the evidence." Now, once you've destroyed the evidence, what what exactly was going to stop Salinger from releasing the information to the police anyway? His word? He's a serial killer, right? Um, and at that point, you have you destroyed the evidence. There's nothing else to tie him to any, to, to any other any of the, the other crimes. You could have very well just said, "Hey, thank you for for clearing me." And go to the authorities and said, "Hey, Trish attacked me and tried to kill me." lock her up and send her to the raft he could have done that um, so there was no reason for her to believe that this guy was telling the truth and then uh, later on um at a dojo attempting to i don't know um boost her ego or um you know when she went to to wrestle him right it was clear that you know from what she's read up so from what she's read so far that um, this guy is uh, trained you know um, he's trained in, in, in that sport and without her abilities she's not a fighter you know she's strong but she's not a fighter without her abilities she wouldn't stand a chance so he just ended up um, bruising his ego and playing right into his hands people captured the footage and then he went out and tried to kill someone else and they just kept tripping over every decision that they made over and over and over again um, there was Trish um, not liking the not that she wasn't in the limelight, so she got a reporter to take photos of her, and then the cops had to take resources that they had um, that they were they were assigned to keep an eye on Salinger. They had to reallocate them to looking for the mass vigilante. So it was a lot of them making a lot of bad decisions that led to Salinger having a, having the upper hand, and not it wasn't so much that um, he was smart outsmarting them as it is they weren't very smart in their decisions and it reminded me a lot of um of hannibal right i'm with um is um mads mickelson yeah um absolutely love the series um i love mads and his performance um, uh, as hannibal but at the same time i never felt at any given time that hannibal was outsmarting the authorities so much as the authorities um weren't doing a great job outsmarting the villain um so it was something similar to that um but at the same time i you know the the conflict between you know jess and um and trish it, it's an ongoing thing and something that we knew they were going to have to resolve at some point and we knew it was going to blow up in their face in some way shape or form we, we we knew this from season one to be honest. Yeah, I'm sure she has been a she has been a, a wild card since season one. It's been unpredictable. She's been doing things um, behind Jessica's back, some shady stuff. It just got worse and worse in season two, and then back to season three, and and it escalated to the point of no return. Right. So we knew all of that was going to happen. Um, uh, eventually, um, and and Trish is next on my list here. No. Um, 
she gets to the point where he, where she ends up killing Salinger. And I will say, right, um, I don't know where where the writers saw, you know, reviews and, and feedback from season two and, and, and thought, you know, viewers were like, there's nothing else that we want more than two to three episodes with a, a montage surrounding Trish. No one asked for that. I don't, absolutely no one asked for that. I'm pretty sure. Everyone hated Trish. Um, and again, I love the actress. She did a brilliant job. I think she's, um, she's supposed to be portraying Hellcat, which is basically just Catwoman. Uh, but so reflexes, um, agility, uh, if she can see in the dark, stuff like that. Uh, and um, but but I, I don't know. I, I think everyone's least favorite part of season two would have been tr um, the episodes with Trish, and uh, season three because of because of the, the amount of screen time that she got in season three, it felt more like it was a, a Trish story than it did a Jessica story in some in some ways not not for the entire season but in some um, in some parts it felt that way. Right, there was, a, there, was a, there was a lot of attention on Trish, and admittedly, I mean, she's supposed to be um, this character. I'm not quite sure what the character's history, what Hellcat's history is with Jessica Jones in the comics. If it's the same in the series, or if they 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 don't know each other, and they know each other as their persona, but not personally as Trish's sister. All right, so I'm not quite sure what the what the difference is versus the um, the comics. Uh, but they, they, they spent a lot of time this season exploring Trish, um, her motivations. Um, we still don't, you know, in my opinion, whether it's, um, it's an addiction or not. Um, that seems to be the case. Or it's just, you know, we, when she was taking the, the pump, you know, the, um, that, that she got from one of the, the, veteran, um, the cop from season one, um, season two, or was it one? Oh, he was in season one and two, actually. He died in season two. Uh, but when she was taking that, she had fits of rage occasionally, um, and she had cravings. So it was it was it felt more like an addiction. Um, here, it may be more akin to what Jessica's mom went through, where um, it's an uncontrollable rage, and she can't stop herself when she gets started. Um, so I mean, we went through the motions of Trish learning how to hone her abilities, and uh, you know, Jessica forgiving her for for killing her mom. And accepting her help to catch this um, this villain, but she she became obsessed with it, and uh, you know they, they joked a bit about the whole mask bit. You know, um, Trish was Trish wanted the mask to be removed because she wanted everyone to know who she was. She wanted the glory, and and that's part of why she did what she does what she does um, for the glory, for the thanks, and and um, to hear thank you. Um, Jessica being on the other on the on the other side, of course, you know, being that if I wish I, I had worn a ma mask before so that I wouldn't have to take responsibility for any of this. And it's, it's interesting because they joked about the same thing um, with, with Luke Cage, actually. And, you know, he was saying it's, it's, it's too late now because he puts on a mask and people learn about this, um, this guy going around in a mask with unbreakable skin. Of course they'll know it's me, right? So it was a funny throwback to, to Luke Cage to, to hear them make, having that discussion. Um, but eventually, and, and we all saw it coming, Trish and Jessica would, would clash um, and go head to head. And um, neither of them really wanted to hurt the other. So she tries to escape and, and she takes um, Hogarth's girlfriend and then Hogarth as a hostage and tries to flee the country. Um, she eventually gets caught, of course, and now she's been sent off to the raft. And uh, it, it's, that did raise, raise one question for me, though, because... The raft is supposed to be a place for superpowered persons, but uh, how do they prove that Trish is superpowered? I, I mean, yeah, she has reflexes and stuff like that, but she doesn't have any um, any glaring abilities, uh, any obvious abilities, you know, impenetrable skin or super strength or anything like that, to prove that she's just above human with with the reflexes and, and stuff like that. She's just above human, um, so I wouldn't consider her to be super powered just as i wouldn't consider a camp woman to be super powered right um so it, it, it's interesting that they choose to send her there because if the raft is filled with all these these maniacs with, with these ridiculous abilities and she's just there oh she can fall off high places and land on her feet 
but yeah, that's not much of a survival skill. I'm sorry. Um, but it, nonetheless, she gets sent to the raft, um, um, and that brings me to, to Jessica, who had to make that tough decision um, to, to send her there. Of course, she had um, she had some help. Luke Cage paid her a visit, and um, you know he spoke about his brother, who he also had to send to the raft, and it was a tough decision that he had to make. Although suffice it to say that that, um, that that conversation could have been done over over the phone. Not that I'm complaining. Um, I, I was glad to see somebody there. I, I was hoping that we would get um, some cameos. Um, I was hoping it would be Matt, but I will settle for Luke Cage. Um, I always thought that they should have stayed together, but I, I think the, the directors want to go in a different direction, so that I may not happen, at least not anymore, since this is the end. Right? So, um, and and somebody can um, someone in the comments, please come, correct me if I'm wrong, but his brother didn't have any abilities, right? He wore a suit when they fought and uh, and got the, the shit kicked out of him, but he didn't have any abilities, so why would he have been sent to the raft? Uh, I, maybe I'm forgetting something if he did get abilities later on, so be sure to post down in the comments and let me know. Um, but eventually, Jessica, um, uh, she realized that, okay, this is what had to be done, and, and um, she went in search of, of Trish, and she eventually, um, eventually knocked her out, and now she's off to the raft. So Jessica herself, um, while some of the other characters um, were, you know, were all over the place and um, didn't necessarily grow from season one, two to three, she's the, um, she, however, has. And um, at the end of season three, we, you know, she has become the hero that her, you know, her mom told her that she could could always be. And she's learning how, um, you know, how a hero needs to behave. And I guess. It's funny because she's she's it's, it's a parallel between her and 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 Matt Murdock now, where in season three you know Matt Matt himself gave up on on the law on the law and and justice being served and decided that you know the law doesn't work anymore, um, and so he had to get he had to get justice the the, the other the one other way that was that was open to him which is just brute strength. I know Jessica is doing the opposite, the exact opposite, and she was over, she was previously in the camp of you know using brute force to get what she needed, and now she has to realize that okay, um, that is not always the way to go, and that's not always going to be an option, um, especially not if your intention is to actually help people, and so um, they have sweet sides now, um, and and Jessica is now realizing that um, she needs local authorities and 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 she needs law on her side if she's going to be able to help people and be the hero um, that she's um, that she's meant to be so uh, i mean i spoke about cameos before with luke cage and um, there was a um, there was a, another mention of rand industries with hogarth when she started to lose clients and um rand being one of being her largest client um pulling out from uh, from her firm uh, because of what happened and uh, the well, they did mention um, that Danny Rand himself is off somewhere. Uh, we know he's off in the jungle somewhere with his brother and doing whatever they're doing. Um, so they, you know, the the board decided to pull out of um, of Hogarth's firm. Um, so um, Luke Cage, we had mention of um, Rand, and we had at the end there we had Kilgrave um, whispering something um, to her. So I'm um, I'm not quite sure what this was hinting at so again if, if you guys have a different interpretation of of it you can post down below and let me know does um you know kilgrave um really his last words to her to to run away and give up and her finally breaking breaking you know his uh, the power that he has over her and deciding to actually stay so um I, I don't know if I'm, I'm misinterpreting what that was intended to be. That's how I interpreted it to be. And so I think she's just going to go back to, um, uh, to, to Alias Investigations and take her keys back from poor Malcolm. Um, but um, I, I don't know. I could be wrong. It could be um, something else. It may very well be that Kugrave is still alive somehow or, or something. Um, but that was my takeaway from it. Um, this is just her finally breaking the control that he has over her or the last um, the last remnants of it and, and coming into her own as a hero, as Jessica Jones, um, the, the hero, right? 
Um, so there we have it, guys. That is it. Jessica Jones season three all around. I it's still not my favorite season. Season one is still pretty much up there, if not um, partly due, well, partly because of Kilgrave. Yes, it, it, it's it's difficult to ignore that that aspect of it, right? Now between him and Winston and Offrill um, as Kingpin, um, they're both um, the two standout characters in this um, this Defenders universe. Uh, so season one of Jessica Jones is still pretty much up there for me and season two and season three I would say are on the same level um, if only because season three felt more like um, it felt as though it's part two to season two and not so much uh, a follow-up right because um, because of what happened with Trish and um, season three was just resolving that conflict um, she she's my sister my best friend but she also killed my mom and them, them um, resolving that in season three. So it felt more like a part two, a continuation of season two instead of um, uh, a standalone um, season by itself. And as much as I enjoyed Salinger, he was more of a tool to get Jessica and Trish from point A to point B. Um, it wasn't so much the, the strong villain that Kilgrave was, right? Um, but overall, I still enjoyed the season. Um, it's still definitely up there as one of my favorites, and I'm hoping that we do get another season. Um, I don't know, with, with the, the Defenders leaving Netflix, I'm hesitant in terms of what will happen when it goes to Disney. Um, I mean, Netflix made the series what they are, right? Um, it's undeniable that Disney has a, a particular brand, a particular tone, in everything that they do right you can see it whether it's the mcu or star wars uh whatever the property might be they have a particular tone that all their movies and series follow and uh, the defenders um daredevil luke cage the punisher is is is, is just year volumes differ in, the, in in terms of how different it is and so i worry that when it goes there and for for um you know it may very well just go to Hulu instead of Disney, but even with that, I, I'm still doubtful that we would still get the same quality um, that we've come to expect from Netflix. Because Netflix, Netflix gives the creators freedom to actually, you know, play in, the, in the, create the sandbox and, and and play in it, right? And we've gotten sure there have been some misses, but there have been more hits than misses, and for that, um, it's something that I, I do have to give them credit for. And they made Daredevil what it was. And I don't feel, I don't think anyone can deny that if Daredevil initially had been with Disney instead of Netflix, um, instead of being produced on Netflix, that it would have gained the same popularity. It wouldn't have. It just wouldn't. All right, so I, I am a bit hesitant in terms of what will happen when it gets there. Um, we will have to wait a bit, since I believe they do have to wait two years before they can continue with these characters. And by that time, um, these actors may have moved on to other projects, and it, or it may, um, the fan base may no longer, you know, may no longer be interested at that point. Um, they, I mean, TV and movies always is just always changing. It's very dynamic. Um, so there's no way to tell what will happen in the next two years. All right. So I will definitely miss this. Definitely miss the defenders. And I, I, I've said before that I do believe what I should have done. And not that it would matter now. The contract would still have ex um, would still have expired, but. I do feel as though they should have um, maybe done with season two for um, for Jessica Luke Cage and then just focus on the defenders themselves and um, and have each character you know um, dominate a, a particular maybe the first half or the second half whatever the case might be but um, I still think the focus should have been on defenders it wasn't as bad as people um, seem to have felt it was I I, just, I I enjoyed the hell out of it right. Um, in any case, be sure to post down below. Let me know what your thoughts are on this season. Um, what are you looking most um, forward to? Um, will you follow this? Now, if, if this does um, get picked up over at Disney or Hulu, will you still be interested in it then? Um, uh, so let me know. Be sure to post down below. Hit like or subscribe. And I will see you guys next time.